Hello everyone and welcome back to the Batman Miniature Game 3rd Edition. Today for you we have 350 rep of yet again the Soldiers of Fortune. However, new miniatures are being shown. So it's not just the Bane crew from the Bane Bat Box. Versus 350 rep of the League of Assassins on a new map setup. Which I hope you'll agree looks pretty fancy. So without further ado, we'll jump straight into taking a look at the teams. Oh, one the thing to mention also is because Bane's not here... Uh, there is special rules for the leader of the Soldier of Fortune, but I guess we'll get into that right now. So this is our Soldiers of Fortune team being led by the Deathstroke the Terminator, this one's called. I'm just going to call him Deathstroke, Deathstroke rather for brevity. Now, he is a free agent with no affiliation, however he has a special rule where if he changes his role to leader, he can lead a Soldiers of Fortune team. I guess that's a throwback to him being included with the like militia, sort of. So he can lead, he's on an overly large base, it's way too big for him, and he's also uh, the first not to come with a smaller base option of the, the leader type people, I guess, because he's a free agent, technically. Either way, he's a pretty cool mini, it's just the base is too big, he's, he's on the rubble of the Teen Titans base. So, with him, we have High Security Henchman and Gustav Gustafsson. We've got the, the Elite Op, is that who it is? Yeah, the Elite Op from Bane's Normal Crew. And then the two new Soldiers of Fortune troops that came out in the same wave as him and the Soldier of Fortune objective cards. So they are called Malacia, I think this one is. And the other one is just called Infiltrate Op. I don't know why she gets a name and this one doesn't. But whatever. And she's kind of like juicing on Venom. She, she has a Venom dose. This one's just kind of like a medium ranged sniper with, with good aim, I think. Uh, the other thing to mention, the objective deck being used is the same as the last Soldier of Fortune deck with one exception, Bane's specific card has been taken out and replaced by Deathstroke's. Other thing, when you take this Deathstroke you have to pick a weapon for him to have in his hands and a weapon for him to have it on his back. Those selections are Bastard Sword, which is a hands, it gives him devastating blow and a double blood sharp devastating sword, and on his back is a modified assault gun, it's, yeah it is actually assault gun not assault rifle, weird. Which gives him good aim. Good aim doesn't actually do anything because the gun doesn't have aim. Oh no, no it does. Because it gives you plus one to your rolls as well. So it gives him that. Double blood. Three times you can fire it for three shots. It has a built in red dot and the assault roll as well. So it's pretty powerful. He, he is very scary. I will say that. So that took a little while. More than usual. Let's go take a look at the leak. So here is our league being led by Raish Al Ghul, of course, the new 3rd edition one. Being backed up by the Heretic, sort of, I don't think he's that loyal to Raish, more so Talia, but still, he's here to help out. Then we have Ubu, the loyal bodyguard who can protect both of them if he wanted. We've got League Acolytes, ooh, 3 and 4, I think it is, the, the two with ranged attacks, and their bows and arrows. And then from the original League of Assassins bat box, we have Hassassin number 2. Simple as that, nothing overly fancy, ready to murder. And with that, we'll have to see what deployment we're using. Alright, these have been shuffled ahead of time. What do we have? We have... Whoop! Vanguard. Did we do this last time? No, no we didn't, because last time it was both crews starting in the middle and you can attack turn one. Alright, we'll do Vanguard. 12 by 12. You know what, instead of using the, the left diagonal and the right one up there, we're going to do opposites, just because otherwise it's a bit unfair, because one of the corners has a building in it. So we'll use this corner and that corner, but we'll do the same thing. Deploy one friendly model up to four inches outside the deployment zone. That will be on top of any models that have hidden, etc, because a uh, high secure henchman has hidden. But yeah, okay, we'll get this set up, see who's going first, and be back at deployment. So we've got things set up, and the League of Assassins will be going first. They selected the deployment at the far end of the table. Soldiers of Fortune down here. Now, there's not many people in the Soldiers of Fortune deployment. Gustav, the elite person, and that's basically it. Uh, I keep on forgetting her name. Malencia? What is her name? Melissa. I'm still going to forget that. Melissa took advantage of the Vanguard rule, so she's up to four inches away from the deployment zone. However, High Security Henchman and the new Infiltrate Op both have hidden, so they can be anywhere as long as they're out of line of sight of enemies, or at least 12 inches away from them. So she is deployed up there, he's down there. She also has the Master of Stealth rule, so as long as she's under the effects of the night, which she is up there, she can only be seen from six inches away, so she's basically immortal, it seems, which is a little... Unfair, but whatever, it's within the rules. Deathstroke also has the scout rule, so before the first turn begins properly, he gets to do a free movement. It's not restricted, he can just do a move action. And he still gets a normal turn uh, when we're into battle round one. So he has moved almost the full 10 inches out of deployment, right up there. And you can see he has Audacity. Malacia has Audacity. 
the Infiltrate Op has Audacity and so does High Security Henchman. Over here, the League did want to deploy here but with her being up there and being targetable from 6 inches only, had to rethink that. So they're in a line, you can see Audacity, and that is the one that took advantage of the Vanguard rule. So with that we are ready to jump into Battle Round 1, League of Assassins, first activation. So before we cover the first activation, there was one other thing, there was a Phase 1 card played, totally forgot to mention it, apologies. But Die Hard has been played by the Soldiers of Fortune, it has been played on Malacia, so as long as she stays standing by the end of the round, that's an easy two points, so that is in play. The first activation for the League of Assassins though was the Heretic, activated with Audacity, moved 10 inches into base to base with that particular sewer marker, but did not do anything with it this turn, so he just moved up. Good old High Security Henchman was the first up for Soldiers of Fortune, I guess he's on contract, I don't know. He did a manipulate for his first action to place down a suspect marker, he has Audacity as well, which triggered Black Ops. Friendly model places a suspect marker within 8 of an enemy model that can't draw a line of sight to either it or the suspect marker. The heretic, if you go as the crow flies, was within 8, which was presumably how you do it, so that does indeed score for 2. Then he did the move action for his second action, didn't do a special. He moved next to the Sir Graying and didn't activate it, because he couldn't. The Falconry Acolyte was next up with Audacity for the League. Move action to within four of the suspect marker that the High Security Henchman played to play his own for his tactical action, which in turn triggered under their noses. Place a suspect marker within four inches of an enemy suspect marker. Simple as that, they just countered the points and also scored two for themselves. And more importantly, got himself in a way that the Infiltrate Op cannot see him. So Malicia, Malicia, I, I, I don't know Spanish names, I couldn't tell you how to pronounce it. I'll probably just jump between both, so apologies for that. She activated with Audacity, she moved 10 to roughly there, then for her special action she activated Super Jump, so she just goes within 6 of her position, so she just went whoop and plumped herself down on the building, giving her a prime spot to jump down from next turn as well, and more importantly, she's basically immortal up there because I don't think anyone can hit her, so that's going to guarantee the Die Hard scores. Assassin activated without Audacity, although he does have a free manipulate that he didn't use from being within 8 of Raish. He just moved 10 inches next to the heretic there and is trying to just get out of line of sight of the potential sniper on the roof there. So we're staying up here on the perched building because the infiltrate op decided to fire down. Now using a medium range gun however the target which was Raish is out of force so it was he was hidden by darkness which means if you fire into the darkness you still lose two dice so she went from four dice plus the strength to losing the strength die in one of the three. Uh, either way, with three dice being rolled, Ubu opted to use Bodyguard, so he stunned himself for one effort to take the hit instead of Raish, and actually all three hits got through, and he's not in cover, so one blood each. It's only a one blood assault rifle, but it fires frequently. So did three blood to him, and if, in case you're curious, because you might be wondering about the, oh, what rule was it? The assault rule, which uh, Deathstroke's assault rifle has as well. The assault rule means that you can ignore the penalty for moving and firing if you're willing to take a minus one to your actual attack rolls. It doesn't do anything to shooting out of invisible distance and the gun doesn't have a scope so it doesn't avoid the night roll. So having successfully bodyguarded his master Ubu was done over there, he activated with audacity, moved 10 right round the corner and then placed a suspect marker right there. Did nothing else with his turn so it's straight back over to the soldiers of fortune. So Deathstroke the Terminator activated and he had one heck of a turn. First of all though, started by playing Cyber Attack, target up to two enemy suspect markers, roll 1d3 plus 2, that equaled 4 because it was 2. Place a counter equal to that, reduce it for each subsequent activation. If either one of these suspect markers remain in play when the counter hits 0, your Cyber Attack has been successful and you score 2. And this can carry over to the next turn, sorry that's not in focus. There's a lot of text there, there we go, that's in focus. So that's in play, it won't necessarily score this turn, but it will score eventually if that suspect marker and that suspect marker are not removed within four activations, which I think there's four activations left in the turn. Either way, sorry I've got a cold. Well I don't have a cold but my nose is running, it's probably allergies. Either way, Deathstroke, he moved 10, well it's 11 because he's got acrobatic which gives him one extra inch, so he moved 11 to here and then he fired his modified assault gun at 
the poor acolyte. So he opted to use the assault roll, which means you don't take the minus two uh, to the number of dice rolled for moving and chewing, but you instead take a minus one to your attack rolls, not your strength roll, your attack rolls. But he also used good aim, which the rifle gives him for a special action, which it lets you move and fire aim weapons, which again, like I said at the top of the video, doesn't make a difference because the weapon doesn't have aim. But the other part of the rule is it gives you plus one to your attack dice rolls, so they counter each other out, so he was just rolling against his defense with everything except the strength die. So anyway, three hits got through, six blood, this poor assassin, so he's not the assassin, he's the acolyte, he's dead, he's gone, didn't score any cards specifically on his death, but he is gone and out. So the other acolyte assassin activated upon seeing his friend dying without audacity, so he did a move up to the safety of the car for cover, eyeing up to shooting Deathstroke next turn perhaps, but not doing anything else this turn. Also, these two counters both go down to three. Where's three? There's three. Good staff, good staff, Sin activated without audacity, so he just did a move with the assault rifle up to there, kind of eyeing up down there, potentially getting Ubu next turn, maybe, although he's out of ideal range, so probably not. So now it's back over to, I think, just Raish to end the turn for League of Assassins, and then back over to the Elite Op down here to end the turn proper. So Raish I'll go activated, he moved up to the Sur Grating and then used his other action as a Manipulate to use the Sur Grating and travel over here to face down poor Gustaf Gustafsson. Oh dear. And to end off the turn, the Elite Op he wanted to shoot at Raish, but Raish is out of 12 inches, so that would have been two dice off, so instead he's positioning himself in such a way that Raish, he might go after either of them, but whichever one he does not go after will get a shot off at him. So that's the plan, and they're sticking to it. So that does take us to the end of Battle Round 1. Uh, oh, those uh, should have been getting counted down, so hang on. Raish activated, Gustav activated, and so did Leop, so that's the three gone, so they'll be removed, which means that Cyber Attack scores at the end of the turn, as does Die Hard for the Soldiers of Fortune. Uh, give me a second to see if anything scored for the League. So the League actually have two cards scoring in the final phase of Battle Round 1. Do not deviate from the plan. The opponent doesn't reveal any of your friendly suspect markers and you had to place at least one. They placed two and neither got revealed. So two points. And then also eradicate the order. Criteria was met. You have more suspects than your opponent in play. Two plays one. So yep, it scored as well. And remember you can score multiple cards in this phase as long as it doesn't have the same name. So you couldn't score two eradicate the orders, but you can score two cards in phase four. The limitation for one scoring card is only during a model's activation. One is a objective, one is a resource. So we'll get things all set up and whatnot, see if any cards are being played at the start of battle round two and move on. So the table is set up for Battle Round 2, no objective cards being played by either side in Phase 1 or Phase 2 of the turn, so we'll just be on from here. And the roll for initiative was actually equal, both teams rolled a 1, but just to reiterate a rule, if the roll is equal for stealing the initiative in a Battle Round after Battle Round 1, whoever did not get it in the first turn automatically gets it. So that does mean that as we go into Battle Round 2, it will be Soldiers of Fortune, almost said Bane. Soldiers of Fortune with Deathstroke going first. So Battle Round 2 opened with Deathstroke the Terminator activating and he went all in. He activated his Devastating Blow trait, which his Bastard Sword gives him before moving as a special action. Then he did a move action, moved point blank into the Heretic's face and declared an attack. The Heretic used three effort. Deathstroke used two, so that's why there's three stun and two stun, respectively. His double blood, sharp, devastating, devastating blow sword, so that's uh, re-roll the strength die, you roll two strength dies and uh, apply both, you get plus one strength your, de uh, your strength die, and he's a weapon master, so he was hitting the heretic on twos instead of threes because he's defense three. So all said and done, uh, six, seven, eight blood done to the heretic but that's actually oh no so yeah he did lose one die from the heretic having uh, light armor but all said and done the heretic lives because the heretic has nine endurance he lived on one hp however that did still trigger search and destroy because he used two effort where he landed at least two hits yeah he landed more than that so yeah the heretic almost went down not quite 
if he only had one less endurance. But yeah, he, he took a blow and a half from Deathstroke there and stayed standing, which is impressive. So before we cover the first activation for League of Assassins, which was Raish, with Deathstroke's action, he did actually trigger the scoring condition for yours to command, which is Ubu's unique card. A friendly model is not removed as a casualty or suffers KO after an enemy attack that produces at least four hits before blocks. There was at least four hits when Deathstroke attacked the Heretic. The Heretic was staying standing by the end of it, so that scored for three victory points. So that is done and dusted. So anyway, Reach activated with Audacity. He did a move action point blank with the Elite up, attacked with his sword. His double blood sword, he lost one uh, attack dice because of light armor. He's weapon master though, so plus one to his rolls. And all said and done, he did six blood, which is exactly enough to kill him. Didn't score anything else, but he did remove a threat. So Melissa activated, and she was up here. She played free for all, so that is the one where from the center of the map, which is basically where the bat signal is more or less, just slightly to the right of it, where I poked there. Have more models within four of the center of the gaming area by the end of the turn, so that's kind of activated there. Um, it will count as kind of like it won't count distance, so within four, it like kind of like a crisis protocol does it. You ignore the size of the building, but right now infiltrate op is obviously basically right there. So she used the special action she had audacity to do a super jump to jump all the way down there and went to punch the heretic who did not use any efforts because she just does double stun damage. Forgot to mention at the top of the turn she did use Venom so she has invulnerability 2 and plus 1 strength die, uh, plus 1 to her strength die I should say. But uh, she's only attack 3 so the heretic didn't do too badly in defending against her and as a result only one punch got through for 2 stun. Now he does have 3 stun on him from efforting to protect himself against Deathstroke that puts him at 5 out of 7 on stun damage. So he's two stun away from being knocked out and one blood away from being killed. So being tired of being everybody's beat stick, the heretic activated and he has desensitized so actually he wouldn't get knocked out, he just starts taking blood damage instead. But either way, he activated. From where he was standing, he went after the... He didn't go after Deathstroke because Deathstroke was pretty tough. Tried to get a cheap and easy kill on Militia. I've forgotten her name already again. But she, for a henchman, is really, really good. Not even to mention the invulnerability 2 from the Venom she took. She has medium armor, so that's two less attack dice. She has defense 3, which isn't great, but still... Uh, he rolled against her with two less attack dice. He got to reroll his strength die, but that doesn't really matter because the heretic hits on a 2+, plus with a strength die anyway. But she did fantastically well with her defense, so the only damage that got through with the strength dice damage and that got absorbed by her invulnerability from taking venom so she took no damage he then moved purely to be within four of the center to help deny points simple enough turn next to infiltrate up up here activated and just shot at the acolyte down here and managed to get four hits through for four blood in total one blood each he has six endurance though so he's still standing with two hits left he has a scene activated next with Audacity. He moved to the far side of the character whose name is very memorable and then attacked her but with the medium armor and then just an appalling roll of a 2 and a 1 did no damage at all. Good staff, good staff's in activated and without Audacity he could just stay still but he shot his little dinky assault rifle into Raish's back and did manage to get three single hits through for one blood each. So that's three blood on Raish. The Wounded Acolyte activated without Audacity, so he stayed still, fired his aim bone arrow and did his once per game enervating gas explosion arrow on Deathstroke. So it just bursts with the... where's the template? That template, so he kind of put it roughly there. It caught Deathstroke and the other Soldier of Fortune character, whose name is very memorable, as said, and hit them both. Just have to roll the strength die to get on that with mechanical, so it's 3+. plus. But uh, Deathstroke's damage got reduced by 1 because he has a Kepler vest. So two blood to her, one blood to him, and he's still staying there. So for the final activation for Soldiers of Fortune, the High Secure Henchman activated and just went over to there via the sword grating or movement is roughly the same either way, so that he is within four of the center of the map to help contribute towards free for all. So I think as things stand right now, two, Deathstroke is within four, I don't think she is, so that would be three. Uh, the Heretic for League of Assassins is one, uh, even if Ubu moved, that would still be three playing two, so I think it still scores regardless, but it is over to Ubu to end the turn. So Ubu activated with Audacity. He moved within one of Deathstroke and the other Soldier of Fortune Lady, whose name is totally Melissa, something like that. 
He just needs to be within one because his scimitar has reach. I think I just said that, but either way, he attacked her and only managed to get one hit through for the double blood. That puts four blood on her in total out of seven endurance. So she's still standing, and that is the end of the second battle round, and Free For All will be scoring for Soldiers of Fortune. So that is two more victory points in the pool. And everybody who has stun damage will be healing one stun. I forgot to mention that at the end of the first turn. Only one person had stun, but it was done. And then we'll get things cleared up and sorted for battle round three. So everything is set up for battle round three and two sixes go roll. Last turn it was two ones, this turn it was two sixes. So leadership, or sorry, first activation has swapped again. So it'll be League of Assassins going first. You can kind of get an idea for where Audacity is just from this view, but also a bunch of cards are being played in phase one. Domination is being played by Bane, which, or sorry, Soldiers of Fortune has got Bane on it. So there's an event marker placed in contact with an enemy model. It's in Assassins, so it's over there, if you can just about see. Any model can use and manipulate to move it within four inches at the end of the round, the, if the Soldiers of Fortune have the most miniatures within four inches of it, you score the card for three victory points. So that is in play for them, but then if we come over here, we've got two cards in play for the League. So Die Hard is being played on Ubu, because it can't be played on Raish. So it's played on Ubu, because the Heretic is one hit away from death. And then also From the Shadows is played, and this is marking a target. And the target is Malatia Matilda, that one. The lady. She is the target. If she goes down as the first casualty of the turn, you score the card. So that would be two victory points. So that's two cards in play, right from the goal, for the League, who is getting first activation as we go into Battle Round 3. So it's a bit of an awkward angle to get here, but Ubu got the penultimate Battle Round started, and he went after the target that Raish marked. He attacked her and only got one hit through for two blood. Now that's six blood in total on her. She has one blood remaining. Ubu then retreated around the corner, hiding partially behind the dumpster in case Gustav decides to take pot shots at him because he is the, the prime target because he's got Die Hard on him. So he's hiding around there and he tried, but he didn't quite finish the job. There is other miniatures over there that can do it though. So Deathstroke the Terminator activated and first of all, Global Offensive was played, so this won't score yet. It's in play now though, and if by the end of the turn, Soldiers of Fortune have more people in play with the Veteran trait than there are enemy suspect markers, it scores for three. There's currently two enemy suspect markers on the field, and three miniatures, Deathstroke, and the two soldiers, not the not the hired henchmen, uh, they all have Veteran traits, so that's three playing two, but there's plenty of time for the League to stop this scoring, which is just as well, because Die Hard won't be scoring because Deathstroke chased after Ubu round the corner and just did a little casual 10 damage, 11 damage, something like that, hang on, 9, 10, 11, yeah, 11 damage to him, so he's very dead, both of them went full effort to try and, well, Defender declared first, but they both went full effort to make the attacks go through as normal, Weapon Master for plus one to the rolls when he's already just defense three, uh, double strength die from devastating blow, and either way, Dead Ubu, he is gone, and that means the Die Hard cannot score. The Heretic activated, he's barely on his feet, but it was good enough to get in there, got through with the Strength Die, two blood, also got a crit on the Strength Die, which would have knocked her over, but it's irrelevant, because she's very dead, which does mean that From the Shadows has scored for two victory points. So that is gone. She is gone. She did really, oh, there's a dropper. She did really, really well. She is very powerful for a henchman. She is pretty expensive for a henchman, but she's really good. Anyway, she's gone. Uh, that does also mean that the League has majority on this for domination, and also means it's even for global offensive, because there's two veteran models left on the table and two suspect markers. Infiltrate op activated, and instead of trying to go for the kill on that other acolyte, since the League have kind of taken over that quadrant of the map, she backed up and she placed, so that she was more than four away from that one, placed another suspect marker which has triggered Black Ops for placing it within eight of an enemy model without line of sight. The Heretic is within eight, right there, so that has scored. Ray shall go activated and he took out everybody's favourite henchman. He went after Gustav Gustafsson and just did a, a little bit of blood damage to him, you know, nothing much, just eight. Which also triggered a neutral card, they must know pain. For a simple one victory point. But poor Gustav, there's not many miniatures left on the table. That's, oh, the League's lost two, almost three. And that's the third gone for the Soldiers of Fortune. 
He has a scene activated with Audacity, he moved all the way over here and placed a suss out marker, essentially guaranteeing, if it wasn't guaranteed before, that Global Offensive, or whichever one it was for having more veterans, is definitely not going to score. Now he did abandon the Domination marker, but Heretic is still there. This guy, he's got no one to fire at, so he can just move in. So essentially it just comes down to what does High Security Henchman want to do to end off the turn. So High Security Henchman didn't do much. He moved, but only to be closer to the centre, because another free-for-all was played for having more models in the opponent's area with four inches. And rather than react to that, because they couldn't reach, the last activation was simply, again, to move next to that to make sure that didn't score. So, as we are in the end of the turn, Domination did not score. Global Offensive did not score, because there's only two models. If you have two models with Veteran left over, there's three suspect markers, only needs to be two. However, that last minute play of Free For All did score. So that's at least some scoring, and with that we'll get set up for the last battle round with not many people left standing. So as we get ready to move into the final battle round proper, everybody who's left standing has audacity. Another From the Shadows is being played by the League of Assassins and it's being played on Deathstroke. This is an all or nothing kind of turn. And for the Soldiers of Fortune themselves, another Domination is being played and the event marker has been put into base to base with Raish. Because this is, this is going to come down to the epic confrontation. Deathstroke and Raish, they're going to go after each other, they're going to go for the throat. We're going to see who comes out on top. Oh, and it is also the League getting first activation. Oh, so this was fun and interesting. Raish went all in on Deathstroke, starting with the playing of his unique objective card, Lord of the Pits. Friendly bosses with any of the enemy boss, place your boss in contact with it. Both make a simultaneous attack against each other, and then if after all that's been resolved, you remove the boss as a casualty, you score the card. So prior to that, uh, Raish activated his special Deadly Strike, so his attacks on the strength die get crit casualty. Now all said and done, he didn't do particularly well against Deathstroke, the only attack to get through was the strength die, but it was a 6, which is a crit. So only, he only did one blood to Deathstroke, the crit casualty applies, and he just killed him, so he's dead. So that has indeed scored 3 victory points for Raish and the League for taking out Deathstroke, but the attacks happened simultaneously, and as you can see, Deathstroke did pretty well and did 12 damage to Raish, he already had 3 on him, so Raish is also dead. Now this creates a, just an interesting thing to bring up. Because Deathstroke's card could have been played. A friendly model removes the enemy model with the highest rep, Raish is the highest, then remove that model from the game, the one who does it as well, but he's dead, so he would have been removed anyway, and would have scored for a fantastic four. However, Raish has the Immortal Rule, and the Immortal Rule, I have his card here, the Immortal Rule says removing this model as a casualty cannot fulfill the requirements of an opponent's objective card, which is fairly cut and dry, that means you can't score that, because it doesn't count as removing as a casualty for an objective card. Ergo, can't score that. The question, though, is if that isn't the case, does that mean that applies to the next highest reputation amount? Because it does say highest. Or does that just mean that Raish just hard counters that as an objective card, so it shouldn't have been brought against Raish? It probably means that, but it is a bit weird. It would have been fairer if, in situations like that, it counted the next reputation level down, which I think would be Ubu. Uh, yes, Ubu is like, no one no, the Heretic is like three points higher than Ubu, so it would have been the Heretic. But yeah, that's that's four points that go out the window because Raish is immortal. In fact, if you play his card as a resource, he just comes back on the board, which is fantastic. But either way, both leaders have successfully killed each other, so they're both gone, but only the League scores something for it. Massive three. So as we covered the first activation for Soldiers of Fortune of what they have left, totally forgot to mention, with Deathstroke going down from the shadows, also scored, so that's another two victory points. Uh, anyway, the High Secure Henchman, he moved to there. He didn't interact with the event marker to move it out of four of Raish, so that now means that Domination is well, almost certainly going to score uh, at the end of the round. So now it's one of these three that get to do anything, and then Infiltrate Op is going to end off the turn for Soldiers of Fortune, but it's just going to come down to last minute grabs for points, if there's any on offer. That has a scene activated, he did a move and then placed a suspect marker, which triggered under their nose because it's within four of a friendly marker. So two more points on the board for the leak. 
So with that activation we're actually able to go into the final phase of that round 4 because she can't do anything. There's no cards that she can score from up there. She can't get down. She's out of ammo so she can't shoot yeah, and killing would have done anything anyway. And none of the cards left would make any of these two do anything that would equal a score. But that does mean as we move into the end that Domination has scored one with no enemies around. So that's three victory points for Bane. However, in phase four of this turn, two cards are being played for the league. Do not deviate from the plan. The opponent doesn't reveal any of your friendly suspect markers as long as you placed at least one. And that just happened. So that's two. And then eradicate the order for having more suspects in play than the opponent which is I think there's like two yeah two playing four so that's five victory points taking us to the end of the game and we'll see who's taken it well judging by the size of these two piles I'm pretty sure I know who's won but let's count this up so that is three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 17 plays 25 for a League of Assassins stomping. Oh, sorry, Ray shouldn't still be on there. But hey, he's immortal, so it doesn't really matter. He comes back. But yeah, that was a fantastic, absolute bloodbath of a match. Soldier of Fortune have two models left on the field. The Assassins have three? Yeah, three, and the Heretics barely standing. That was a very fun match. And yeah, the Soldiers of Fortune kind of got their, their behinds kicked by the League. Luck of the draw obviously applies to what cards get picked up when. Denying the four for Deathstroke taking out Raish. I mean, it wouldn't have made them win because it would only bring them to 21, but it would have made it closer and yeah, Rish is just a hard counter to that, I guess. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. Please do continue to show your support if you want to see more Batman in the future. We'll get two other crews on this table, I think. Take a break from the Soldiers of Fortune for a little while, now that we've seen what they can do. They've had a good win rate. They've had, like, they've had a... Is that 50% win rate? I think they've won two, lost two. They're doing well. They're doing well. Anyway, see you next time. Ta-da for now.